So then I got around to weathering an old locomotive that I had. I actually had damaged paintwork already, so it justified it. And I've given this quite a heavy weathering. Now I've done this all with a, an airbrush and acrylic. So that's watered down paint. And the advantage of that is when I sprayed over the windows, I could use a brush to paint off the areas where the wipers were. And it creates quite an interesting effect. Now some people say, well, trains wouldn't be like that. The driver would already wipe them clean, but I suppose as it's going along its journey, the wipers would have to do their thing. And so this represents the train as it's gone through most of its journey. And it's very heavily weathered, this one. Of course, there's various stages of weathering you can do to a model. And this particular Class 52 Western is very heavily weathered. Now, Hopefully, I don't know if you can see this because of the colour of the model, but it's blacker here around the diesel outlets and browner down here where the regular dirt would go. So what I did first of all was I used the black wash, some acrylic mulm oil, just around here to create a blotchy effect. And I think you can just see some of that blotchiness. And then I got a black spray paint and I gave it a light dust in the black to give it a sort of more even feel and I like the combination of the two personally that suits me it's not as manufactured looking it looks like a toy when it's sprayed just with an airbrush and I think using a, a, a regular brush as well as an airbrush creates a nice mixture of effects but then I've used the airbrush down here and this was just a cheap 10 pound airbrush so I would generally spray below the model and let the overspray gently hit around here so I could do it bit by bit and I've made it a bit more dense in some areas than others. I'd also already weathered this model rather unsuccessfully using a brush and I really wasn't happy with the effect that it gave. So I wiped that off because that was acrylic so it was water based, I could easily get that off and I started again. But because it was slightly blotchy underneath it has still given me a slight unevenness in this sprayed look and I like the way it looks, I think it's much more realistic. I also put some little darker brush streaks of black in certain areas, just so it wasn't too uniform. You could even put little silver areas where metal is showing perhaps, uh, where it would get warm if you wanted to do that. And of course you could weather it much more lightly as well if you wished. I may need to look at photographs to see if I need some glossy or oily black areas around here uh, on the actual running gear perhaps it wouldn't all be matte I'm not sure yet perhaps after running a journey it would be pretty much matte so I've got some sort of shiny effects but I'm, I'm still deciding what to do so I'm experimenting still with this one final thing I'm about to do is give this model a matte finish and I'm spraying that on using my cheap £10 airbrush again. So I've used some humble thinners and this matte coat paint, mixed it down 50-50. And I'm about to spray this so that it seals in this finish so it doesn't wear off quite so easily. But I, I didn't want a gloss varnish, that would make it look shiny. I want it to remain matte looking like this. So that's why I'm using this product. We'll see how well it works. So I've got my airbrush ready and I'll just give it a go and hopefully that'll protect it. Okay, so that's all sprayed at the moment. It's gloss at the moment because it's drying and it should dry matte. To aid electrical conductivity, I'll need to clean the wheels as well. Just make sure they're free from paint. So I mean, may need some thinners there um, just to clean any excess paint off. A bit of surgical spirit too, perhaps. And that should do it. 